All right, Claude Harris here. Let's jump back in. This is buying real estate part two. I thought I was just going to do one, but I've got so much information in my big head that I got to continue to share information and try to help you guys out so you can learn from my mistakes before I go into my opinions and my experiences. Let me give my disclaimer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not um, a lawyer. If you want to get professional counsel, I prefer that you actually um, contact an attorney or a lawyer before you make any decision about your financial affairs. I'm just giving you opinions and experiences that I've been through. So I just want to make sure I'm covering myself. So let's jump into real estate, buying real estate part two. All right, so before we jump in, I want to go kind of more specific in this conversation um, that we want to keep at 10 minutes about the different ways you can buy property. And then in part three, I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that I actually bought properties and the deals and kind of ha what happened with those and how, how I made profit off of those uh, when I was in the game. So the first one is um, if you're an investor and you're buying a property, you can buy a property, which is a, um, a topic that's called a lease purchase. And so uh, if you've got, let's say you've got challenging credit and you're like okay how do I buy a property with no money down and no credit you, I mean because you really you don't have anything to really offer um, you know you can't bank loan finance you uh, owner financing is maybe kinda of questionable so how do you make it happen with no money and no credit that kinda of deal so um, there's people that are out there that are really to be honest with you they're upside down in property and so upside down in property means that they got a property and a lot of times you see this in the hood where properties um, start seeing a lot of foreclosures and the properties are dropping down and you got a person that's got a first and possibly a second and they're paying you know they got uh, let's say the house is worth 50 and they got a first for 40 and they got a second for 20 and so they they're they can't sell it. I mean, they literally cannot sell that property. They owe 60 grand. The house is worth 50, and they got to pay a real estate agent, you know, six or seven percent commission. So I mean, they would have to literally go to closing and write a check for almost 20 grand just to get out of that house. And so for those kind of people that are really desperate, maybe life has caused them to have to move and to be with a loved one in another city. Or her husband got relocated, and you know the family's got to be uprooted, and the wife does not want to have him because um, she's not working to be in another city without her, if you know what I mean. And so, um, any however that goes down, so people just have situations that happen, and they got to get out. And so, as an investor, those are the ones that you can basically, you know, try to market to find. Be it you, you see people that have houses for rent, because sometimes people that can't sell try to rent. And so you can approach those that are in the classified ads and ask if they would consider doing a rent to own. Um, or you can try to do uh, mailers and say, hey, I buy property um, in, you know, any, any condition, whatever. And give me a call. We can see what we can do to try to buy your property, even if you're upside down, you know, however you want to put it in the flyer. I did all that kind of stuff. And so basically what you can do in those situations is see if you can either try to do an owner finance where they do like a rent to own to with you um, but in your contract and you again get a lawyer because I don't want to go too deep into this but try to have it in there where you have the ability to sublease it to someone else um, and in there you can maybe you know if they got payments that are decent you know they may have five hundred and fifty dollars between the first and second and you think you can get maybe six hundred and twenty five dollars in rent you know and you can always overestimate the payments when you're doing a rent to own you tell people hey we're gonna sell you the property over on a five-year lease payments are gonna be seven hundred dollars a month um, and we're gonna sell you a property for seventy five thousand and so you owe them sixty you sold it to the new tenant for seventy five thousand and you tell them that you give them fifty dollars a month uh, if they pay between the first and the fifth as um, credit towards the um, the down however you want to work that and so yeah you may be discounting you know four or five grand but you've got you know two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars in cash flow and then you also make seven to nine thousand dollars on the back of the property when they finance it with the bank um, and, and, and that's how you can be creative there's other ways you can do it but that's just a basic idea of kind of how you deal with no money and no, and no credit um, 
if you're looking to to flip homes you can actually and you, and you have good credit then you can actually go to either a bank and do like a construction loan they'll give you the money to buy it they'll also give you the money uh, for your rehab and then um, if you general contract it on the rehab you may be able to actually put money in your pocket every time you take a draw a draw is um, you you start out with whatever project and then they come out and inspect it and then after they inspect it then they give you money to replenish what you've done to start that project and then you move on to the next project so maybe the kitchen got refinished and then they gave you the money back for what you did in the kitchen so then you now use that money to go and do the living room or the basement or whatever so um, those are some of the things let me give you some real real life tips and tricks if you buy a property in the hood I strongly suggest that you do not put the furnace in that property until the tenant is in there you can do you can do the AC unit, the the condenser or the compressor, whatever they call that thing, outside. We used to actually have to literally put a piece of uh, concrete down, put the unit on the concrete, and then put bars around the unit uh, so people wouldn't steal them. I mean, it's sad to say, but straight up, that's what we had to do. I've literally had to pay homeless people to stay in my property. If I had no other choice but to put the, uh, if it was you know winter time and I need to keep heat in the place, and uh, I would pay them to stay in the property and go get them food to eat, so a body was in my property and, and nobody would actually break in there and, and take all my, uh, you know, my furnace and my a coal and and my copper and all that stuff that may be in the place, um, get scratch and dent utilities never I mean not utilities but appliances I remember buying brand new appliances from Home Depot and then my tenant moved out in the middle of the night and took my refrigerator so um, yeah just scratch and dent and, and they got some decent stuff so you don't don't think just because I said scratch and dent that is this you know secondhand stuff it's still not bad stuff especially if you're in the rental game if you're in the flip game you want to definitely get top-notch appliances one of the biggest problems that I see when people are getting in this real estate market and they're looking to you know become investors is you know they want to get a cheap house and you know do their little rehab rehab and all that stuff the the problem with cheap houses is the market value of those properties goes up and down extremely volatile um, if there's a lot of foreclosures your property I had a property that was worth eighty thousand dollars and within six months it dropped down to forty thousand dollars I mean it's crazy how much equity those properties can lose and how quickly they can use lose them um, so be mindful of that I would rather be honest with you buy a property that is in a ninety five to hundred and fifty thousand dollar range it may cost you more money you may be taking more risk in regards to how much um, you're obligating yourself to financially but the market the, the house values don't don't move as as big as they do in the hood there's not a, a lot of vandalism like you deal with in the hood and you get better tenants you know people want to be in good school districts and, and be able to send their kids to have be in a safe environment so even though sometimes it looks like man I, I can buy this property here for eighteen thousand or I can buy this other property here for 95 I'm gonna go ahead and start you know I'm just buying my first property and get this little eighteen thousand dollar one you're taking bigger risk with that one sometime than you are about getting a property that's in a better neighborhood so um, I can go deeper Lord knows I could go deeper but I'm gonna kinda stop there for today um, that's part two of real estate investing I just kinda wanted to talk to you a little bit about again you know you can you can buy property with no credit um, no cash you got to be creative. You got to know how to put deals together and how to solve problems for people so they would trust you. And and you got to be, um, you got to keep a job. You cannot be out here with no credit and no cash and get in the real estate game and think you're going to do this all full time. I mean, you're setting yourself up for massive failure. You know, make sure you have a, a consistent check coming in and slowly build I would not overdo it if you're buying your first properties like that I would definitely probably not do any more than one or two deals in a year um, just to kind of get yourself uh, accustomed to dealing with tenants and if they don't pay you gotta pay and so you need to make sure that you take the money that they give you to move in and put it in a bank if there's cash flow put that in the bank 
so you're able to keep that obligation going that you've made to someone else. You don't want to not do what you said you were going to do. Um, and then if you're in buying properties for flips, you want to be able to get you a good relationship with a good realtor that can show you deals that are out there. They can pull comps for you. You want to find out good rehab guys, start building your database and your cell phone, a good electrician, a good plumber, um, good roofer, all that, just building your team. And it all takes time for you to put together people that you believe do good work, that you can trust, that are dependable, that do what they say they're going to do, and that you can count on. So um, that's part two. I'm going to actually cut this off now. Have a great day.